how firm are you when you stand your ground? Good morning. It's been a little bit since you've seen me like this. And I've got a fair amount to go over. So I am not the person you really want to challenge. Because I am the person that out of complete foolishness will destroy myself and everything around me before I bow down. That's the kind of person I am. And I've had quite a few struggles as of late. Um, in life in general and with the Father. I have a really hard time doing anything that I can't make any sense out of. If I can't see the logic behind it, if I can't see where it's supposed to lead or how it's supposed to work, I typically will avoid it. However, God does not. And through the course of the 10 years of me doing the Watchman News, I don't see getting anywhere. Nowhere. And I still don't. Right now, I don't see anywhere I've gotten, anywhere I've progressed. Now, you have to understand my objective. <clears throat> my objective has never been to build a big YouTube channel. My objective has never been to make money off of said YouTube channel. My objective has not been any of the things that society reaches up for each and every day. Not my objective. I've said it a ton of times. I am not a social person. I don't like social things. I don't necessarily play well with others. Why? Because there's a lot of bullshit people on this earth with a lot of bullshit mindsets, and I don't play well with that. I'm not going to bow down to it. And I'm certainly not going to kiss their asses. I have been struggling quite a bit lately with a lot of things. I mean, it's a laundry list. Everything from, you know, it's been 10 years since I've seen my kids. Folks have no idea how much that weighs on me because I don't talk about it. The reason I don't talk about it is because I try to m remain as detached as I can because if that that's an emotion that I don't, no, you don't want me going there. To me, for no reason at all, removing children from a parent's life is a really despicable thing to do. And it makes it so much worse when you have a court system and a society, an ignorant society, that backs up what is going on. There is no recourse. And for men in the state of Illinois, you're screwed. I know, I know, personally know people that have spent over $100,000 on legal fees. And all they've got is the customary visitation of every other weekend, every other holiday. Over a hundred grand. And this person that I'm, I'm speaking of is a pretty prime example of an incredible human being. Nothing wrong with him. Nothing wrong with him. He doesn't have a bad past in any way, shape, or form. He just happens to have something swinging from between his legs. And that's enough in the eyes of the state of Illinois to be completely condemned and ripped out of the child's life as much as possible. I would say that if somebody hasn't worn those shoes 
they might want to sit down and shut the fuck up. I hear a lot of stuff on YouTube. I hear a lot of pompous attitudes, of overconfident fools, of egos that nothing can contain. I made a community post the other day. There are two fairly popular YouTubers, two, that like in the last year has lost either their wife or their girlfriend because of their swollen head. That's why they left. That's why they left. Nobody wants to be around that bullshit. The reason why I call them narcissists is because they refuse to even look at it. They won't even take a second to look at themselves and how they may be portraying themselves. I know I portray myself as a jackass because I intend to. Look, life isn't all glamour for a lot of people, for a lot of you as well, I'm sure. And I have a hell of a hard problem dealing with or dealing around people that will bullshit you to no end to get your favoritism. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what the, the YouTubers are doing. They'll sit there and pander to you and pander to you and lie through their teeth to get you to keep clicking on that content. What lies am I talking about? Okay, I've said this before several times. There's a reason I don't sit there and go on and on about how I've got the best, most well-informed audience and blah, blah. You know why? Because that's a lie. It's a lie. For any one of us to say it's a lie. It's a complete damn lie. Uh, folks, you know, there's right and wrong. It's not real damn hard to see the difference between right or wrong. But a lot of people are closing their eyes so tight to it because it doesn't fit what they want. And God knows the only damn thing that matters on this planet is what people want. There are a lot of people, not a lot, but there are a fair amount of people that just want what they deserve. And they can't get it because of all the fakes and frauds out there that are trying to take in as much as, but it's a survival of the fittest. That's a, uh oh, is it survival of the fittest? Do you want to see survival of the fittest? I would love to go to survival of the fittest. I would love it. There's a whole lot about me that people don't know. I prefer peace. I prefer civility. I prefer a communication, a back and forth, a working things out. But make no damn mistake, I am a big fan of war. I am a big fan of war. And I am one of those people that, oh yeah, I'd like to get me some. But you see, for 51 years and counting, I have kept that beast suppressed. I was cut from a different cloth, folks. Plain and simple. And a lot of these pompous jerk-offs on YouTube that run around and are oh, Billy Badass they are. They ain't got a clue. They ain't got a clue. And it's frustrating. It is highly frustrating being somebody that has dedicated their life to learning, dedicated their life to learning how to how to how to fix things, how to build things, how to engineer things. To have a bunch of people that barely know how to turn on their damn iPhone to record a video talk about how brilliant they are and how dumb people like me are. 
you know, the people that actually do the stuff. So I've got a lot going on. I've got a lot going on. And it goes a lot deeper than that. A lot more personal than that, which I'm not going to get into yet. Not right now. It'll come. Believe me. You make me an enemy. All right. You're an enemy. You made the bed. Now you lie in it. More on that in the future. I'm uh, not going to play games with anybody. So... I'm going to tell you basically what I know up to this point, what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do up to this point, and I'm going to lay it out all on the table, because that's how I feel things need to be done. So, first of all, uh, and this has little to no effect on anything, I mean it does, and I'll explain that in a roundabout way, as to me walking away from YouTube. On the 21st, our domain goes up, thewatchmannews.com. Freaking 20 bucks for a year. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. And then this morning, and this is the second time this has happened, I got the second email invoice, which is for the actual hosting service. So, uh, we're supposed to get a little bit of money for, for the coming holidays, and I was going to use that to take care of the $20 hosting, and that's if it gets here in time. But then I get the notice today that on the 29th is when our hosting, our actual hosting is due. And that ain't 20 bucks. That's, um, I'd have to look, $42.50. So there is no way whatsoever that I can save the website. I might be able to save the domain if things go right. But as it stands, we're looking at about 65 bucks or so that I need in order to keep the website all together. Again, if I can manage to squeak out the 20 to keep the domain, I'll be good. We won't have a website because I won't have hosting. It's two different things. You've got a domain and then you've got to have web hosting. I just, I don't want to lose the domain. I have no idea how much further, how much longer the Watchman News is going to go. I can't tell you. I was 100% done. I wouldn't expect me to return a day before the first of the year. I am going to take time off. I have to. I'm about to lose my freaking mind. Me and the father had a nice long drug out battle. You see, Father created me, and He knows everything about me inside and out. He knows my limits. He also knows that even Him, that He can go beyond those limits, and I will turn, and I will walk away. That is the kind of integrity that I have. I don't play with people. I won't play with anybody, including the Father. I'm not going to play with nobody. I'm not. I don't have time for it. I don't have the mental capacity for it. I don't, certainly I don't have the patience for it. So my big thing to him was, why in the hell are you having me do this? At best, I feel like Moses wandering around in a desert for 40 years. At best. So I told him flat out, you want me here? I want to see some things happen.
one of the things that gets me the most is watching the Father's Word be misused. Watching it be used to make money. Watching it be used to garner control. Watching it to be used as a club to hit other people with. And There are a lot of things that are commonly said in our society that aren't true. Let me go over some of those. Number one, God is perfect. Have you ever heard that? God is perfect. God is perfect. Yeah, you, you know that's a lie. Oh, yeah, no. Sacrilegious? No, I'm not sacrilegious. And that's not blasphemy. Why? What's the story behind the rainbow? What's the story behind the rainbow? You can't sit there and tell me the story behind the rainbow and then tell me that God is perfect. You have to pick one. Either he makes mistakes in which he repents for too, or we're just going to close our blinders to everything that he's corrected himself on. So we can say he's perfect. People are so full of shit. For if there's something something that you just flippantly say because society just flippantly says it, you probably want to take another look at that. And if it's not true, stop saying it. Pretty simple. There's a lot of stuff. And, you know, there's uh, an individual here on YouTube... That is completely misrepresenting the word of the Father. And he positions himself to be a benefactor no matter what using the Father's word. Bear independent. I will call you straight out. And I know you're going to ignore me. You're going to deny me. Why? Dude, you're not an idiot. You're pretty damned intelligent. You know how to run things so that you don't get caught. One of the biggest mistakes, and Bear knows this, one of the biggest mistakes he could make would be to get caught up in somebody. You know, as in a back and forth with somebody. Because the right person can trip him up. And he's smart enough to know that. And it's why he avoids conflict like the plague. (laughs) I'm not an idiot. I've been around a little bit. I've met a whole hell of a lot of people, and I've dealt with even more. I've done a lot of stuff, a lot of different stuff in my life. Most of it, I've had to deal with people. So, I actually am good at it, if I want to be. But here, on ScrewTube, (laughs) not even going to try. Not even going to try. If I've got a professional relationship with you, you'll see a whole different mic. Whole different mic. So the deal is, if I'm supposed to come and keep doing this for reasons that I sure in the hell can't figure out, then something needs to be done about the fake prophets. And I was given his word. Again, it's probably not going to be before the first that I come back. I don't know if I'm going to continue doing things in VR or if we're going to go back to this method. I, I don't know anything yet. I'm going to be having a whole lot of talks with the Father. Again, I'm not here to follow YouTube's recommendations on how to make myself seen or known or bigger or whatever. No. 
I have to remain within the rules. I have to remain within the lines. Just because other people go outside of them and and profit in many ways, you know, greatly, doesn't mean I can do it. Just because somebody else does something doesn't give me the okay to do it. I still have to follow the rules. If I want to remain within the Father's favor, I have to follow the rules. And unfortunately, following the rules in today's society will not take you up. It will get you pushed down. Any questions on that? It, it, it flatly states it in the Bible that these times are coming. It flat states in the Bible about how people are such lovers of themselves. Now you see why, you know, I made the comment, one of the things that absolutely goes through me on YouTube is all these narcissistic, um, the, these thumbnail pictures, right? Where the person has to superimpose an image of themselves with some goofy-ass look on their face pointing to something or whatever. Folks, that is vanity on a scale like you'll never know. Most people don't even realize it. Not even a second thought. You know, just because somebody else breaks the Father's rules doesn't mean it's okay for you to do so. The other myth that I want to dispel, uh, thanks to Christianity, God is in control. Oh, yeah? Mind showing me where you saw that at? In the Bible. Not in your Sunday school class. In the Bible. You mind showing me in the Bible where it says God is in control? Because I can show you just the opposite. That right now, God is not in control of this world. Where's the confusion? Am I going to believe the BS made up by man or the written word as spoken by God? I believe I'm going to go with the written word. I have to. God is not in control. Not of this planet, not at this time. He will be, but not right now. And he was very clear about that. He was very clear about that. There are a lot of things that were made very, very clear in the Bible that people conveniently ignore, especially Baron Dependent. He always got one side, right? He's, he's supposedly going after the truth of the Bible, yet he'll sit there and keep quoting Romans to you over and over and over because that is one of the biggest control mechanisms in the Bible that was never there to begin with. You know, the saying stupid is as stupid does. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Romans is not a legi legitimate book of the Bible. For those that don't know. It was added during the Council of Nicaea. At the same time that many other books, very, very relevant and important books of the Bible were removed. The book of Jasher, the book of Enoch, the, um, what is it, the Garden of Edom, I think is what it's called. And, and you could go, it's real simple, you can go to a website, <coughs> sacredtexts.com. I believe, but there is a, uh, there is a hyphen between sacred and text. Yeah, sacred dash texts dot com. I'll put a link to it in the description first comment. Um, in fact, I'll put a link to the Apocrypha page, and that will have the the books of the Adam and Eve, the uh, book of Yasher, the book of Enoch. The, I'm drawing blanks, but yeah, the the Apocrypha. It'll be there. You can read it at your leisure, totally free. Doesn't cost you anything. I highly do recommend though that you get an actual physical book with the Apocrypha in it. 
Um, if I can get it on the camera, that is mine. So, um, just whichever. Um, but that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. The Apocrypha is probably more important to know than many of the other books in the Bible because it completes the picture of what it is that you need to know. Which, by the way, is why it was removed. There's a lot of fake prophets out there, a lot of false prophets out there telling you a bunch of nonsense. And I can tell you unequivocally that if somebody is um, condescending towards the Arab faiths and supporting uh, the uh, Judaism faith, they're a false prophet. At least an uneducated, understudied one. I don't know what else to say. The truth is the truth. I'm not going to cherry coat it. I'm not going to sugar coat it. I'm not going to play games because oh, I might make this YouTuber mad. Oh. Some of us aren't scared to stand up, some of us aren't scared to tell the truth. Some of us will stomp a mud hole in your ass without blinking an eye. Plain and simple. I'm coming back. The gloves are coming completely the fuck off. Completely. But from the father, I want to see somebody go down. I want to see someone go down. You can only piss on the father so much before I will stand more firm than you've ever seen anybody stand. And I've had people push me far too much for far too long. And that ends. Every area of my life, that ends. I shouldn't have to expect to fight more or fight harder for whatever reason that people dream up in their damned heads as to why they should have the easy way and I should have the hard way. Well, I've fought too many damned hard ways throughout my life. I sit here. I don't have a single good tooth in my mouth. Not a single good tooth. As I m mentioned on that video. Yeah, you would have a front-on view of me right now today if I had teeth. No doubt about that. I don't want the camera to be on the back of my head. I want it to be on my face. I want you to see my eyes when I talk to you. Because I think that is incredibly important. I think being able to look somebody's eyes, being able to see their eyes when they speak to you is one of the most important things. Because it tells everything. It really truly does. The eyes say a whole hell of a lot. And yeah, I would love it if you guys could see my eyes while I'm communicating with you. It's an important thing for me. And that would be why. Because I can tell a lot of intent by looking at somebody when they talk. But you see, all those years that I paid into health insurance at different jobs that I've worked at and all that, none of it means a damn thing. None of it means a damn thing.
and it's frustrating. It is very, very frustrating. And there ain't jack I can do about any of it. And it's frustrating. I've reached a point I don't even I don't want to be here. Period. Not just YouTube, not I do not want to be here. Why? What's the purpose? People don't know how much it takes out of me not to have my children in my life. No idea. But you got jackasses like Kenneth Patrika, pinball preparedness. And yeah, I'll keep calling him by name. Why? Because that motherfucker needs to be exposed. People like that need to be exposed. Is what it is. All I was sent here to do. I wasn't necessarily. Well yeah I guess I wasn't sent to do the news. But not necessarily. No. I was actually sent to YouTube. For two things. And that was to warn people about the pole shift. And to let people know about wood gasification because that is the only damn way we can be able to save countless amounts of lives in a short amount of time. That's what the Father sent me to YouTube to do. I could have been the absolute failure in all of that because I went to news. I don't know. I don't know. At least I'm trying, and at least I'm trying to follow God's word, not my own wants, my own desires. I've got one desire, and that's to see my kids again. That's it. And to serve the Father. But as far as earthly desires, I've got one. I want to see my kids before I die. I am not just whistling Dixie when I say I probably won't be here for another year. And all of it coming in on me at the same time it's a bit overwhelming. I'm not going to make any promises right here, right now. I may be back after the first of the year. But I wouldn't expect it a day before. If you want me to treat you with decency and respect, you should probably offer that up to me. Because if you offer me bullshit, God help you. Folks have no idea. Let me tell you this. Unless you really know the shoes I've walked in. I'd be a little hesitant to say shit. I 
I don't know what else to say. Don't know what else to say. Maybe back after the first of the year. Regardless of whether I am or not. Go seek a personal relationship with God. Don't seek a personal personal relationship with your church or with your faith or with bare independent God. He wants you to come to him. No middleman. No middleman. That means no religion, no faith, no nothing. That means you and him. That's the way he wants it. He didn't. These churches, these religions, they weren't God's idea. That's man's idea. It's not God's idea at all. A lot of things that God commanded you to do that religions go directly against like going straight to him oh no you got to come through us you have we got to give you this little bread cracker thingy every you know and you got to take this little drink and then you got to say this thing and you know those are the rituals that the bible warned you about those are the dogmas of man that the bible warned you about you're not supposed to partake in those Now, if you want to partake in communion, then do so at home. Oh, but the baby. No, your church said that, not the Bible. And just because you can twist and contort Scripture to make it sound like that's what he's saying, doesn't make it so. Have you ever thought about talking to him and asking him what he meant? Ooh, now we might be getting somewhere. So while you got so many people that are running to other men, and when I say man, I mean mankind. It could be a female too. But when you have people that are running to men to have men explain God they're going to fail and you're going to fail you can go to God ask him that's what he wants he doesn't want you going he doesn't want barren dependence as a middleman he doesn't want Catholics as a middleman the Baptists as a middleman the Protestants the, it doesn't matter he wants no middleman he wants you How do I know the things that I know? Because he was gracious enough to let me know. And he's gracious enough to let you know too, but you have to seek him. You have to seek him. I don't know. That's where I'm going to leave it for now. I'll let you know more when I know more. Shalom.